Hi, John here. Let me show you what I'm working on. It's a big timer that I'm going to use in a booth at a STEM Fest in a few months. I want to be able to see, people to be able to see this from 20 to 70 feet away from the booth. I think we got it covered. Each one of these digits is 250 millimeters high. I 3D printed this. This is the diffuser. This is the front piece on there. Here's what the back piece looks like. You can see it has these like troughs. Those are to hold these strips of LEDs that are available at places like Adafruit and Amazon and eBay and so on. They snap inside here. You then just attach some wire leads, connect it up to some power and an Arduino, and you're in business. You'll see I've got big ones, I've got little ones. Uh, here's, a, here's, the, here's the diffuser for a small one. Here's the back piece for a little one. I also have the individual segments. So I can print them out one segment at a time, piece them together kind of like I've done here. Here's the back piece of a single segment. You might line them all up. Oops. You might line them all up and glue them, say, on a, on a back panel like this. I painted a piece of wood black for this. Glue them down. You know, eyeball them together so that they align right. Then print yourself some diffusers and snap them in like this. All right? So even if you have a small printer, you can still print pretty big digits if you want. So how do you go about this? Let's go find a whiteboard, and I'll show you how I designed the shape of each of these segments and put them together. Came up with a, a design that's parameterizable. So the same design, you can print these big ones, you can print these little ones. To print a seven segment LED housing that's shaped like this with strips like this, we need to know the dimensions of the strips and how many pieces of strips are going to go in each one of these segments. Measuring the strips that I have, I noted that six of the LEDs provide a length of 100 millimeters. The width of the strip is 10 millimeters. I record that as LED len and LED width. Given that I'm going to put two strips in each segment, I need to figure out the geometry of this segment based on the dimensions then of the LED strips. So I decided I would create these two troughs, put a little divider inside there like this. And uh, I need to now know how wide everything is going to be and how long it will be and so on. The easiest one to note is the inside length of the segment. Inside length was simply going to be the number of LEDs times the length of each one. I decided the number shall be 5 and the length, as we reported earlier, is 100 over 6. So that's great. Um, that's IL. What about this SW? It turns out you can't just print a trough then just stick the LEDs in there that's the exact size. The printer will have imperfections and so on, as might the strip itself. And if it's ever even slightly too small, it will not go in there and have all kinds of problems. If it's too big, it's okay. It might move around a little bit, but that's not a problem, like being too small. So I decided to define strip width as the actual LED width plus a fudge factor of 0.75 millimeters. So now we can calculate how wide the inside and outside of the segment would be. There's this dividing wall that I want to put between the two segments, or the two strips rather, so that they don't have a chance of falling over each other. I've decided to make that 1.2 millimeters. I've decided to make the outside wall of the segment housing 1.3 millimeters thick. The inside width from here to here then, IW, is two times the strip width plus the dividing width. The outside width is simply going to be the inside width plus two times the wall thickness. Right here. Okay, let's finish the easy ones. The ends of these segments are really squares, right? You can see the four points. One, two, three, and then the fourth one is hiding. It's right inside here. So in order to know the length of the, one of the sides of this square, I need to kind of think about this for a second, right? I know that this is IW long. I know that it's a square. Therefore, I can see in my head that there's a right triangle inside here like this, right? Turns out the leg of this thing is half of IW. This way it's squared. Symmetric, therefore, the leg of this side here uh, is also going to be IW over 2. Pythagoras says ICH squared equals IW over 2 squared plus IW squared. Same logic for OCH. You simply use half of OW. 
for the legs of that guy. So these dimensions are all knowable quite easily. What about the outside length here? I need to know how long this is. Here's a larger view of this, of this uh, joint here. This being the wall, I know the wall thickness of these guys. Here's the angled wall here and the vertical wall there. If we put ourselves some, some label the knowns, right? If I draw a perpendicular line to the side wall here and mark it as such with these right angles, I draw another perpendicular line here to the angled wall. I know the length of this line inside here is WT. I know the length of this one is WT. Uh, I want to solve for this X over here because that's this little distance in here. There's another one up there. So ultimately, this is going to be IL plus two of these X's to calculate the OL value. So I need to solve for X. Well, what do I know given all this fun stuff? I know that this is all these angles around here add up to 360. And if you subtract 90 minus 90 minus 45 minus another 90, it means that all this theta plus theta prime must be 45 degrees. I know that. OK. I need x. What do I know? I know that the tangent of theta equals x over wt, like this. And I can solve for x if I know what tangent of theta is, which means I need to know what theta is. It's probably half of 45, because this is probably symmetric, but I'd like to know and be sure. Otherwise, this thing really won't fit together right. So how can I prove that theta is half of 45 degrees. Well, I can observe that the cosine of theta is WT over H. I drew a hypotenuse, uh, this other line in that hits this point here. And I also know that the cosine of theta prime is WT over H, because both of these are right triangles, all right? Now, if you ever have this situation where cosine uh, 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 of theta and cosine of theta prime are both the same values, then you know that these both of these angles must be the same. Therefore, 2 times theta does equal 45, and therefore theta does equal 45 over 2. We can substitute that back in this equation up here and into the uh, bigger picture over here. You end up with OL equals IL plus 2 times the little x, which is this guy, tangent 45 over 2 times WT. Now that we have all these values, we know all these dimensions, we can open up uh, OpenSCAD, code this geometry up, render it, and print it out.